Let me be clear, okay? I've been saying this for a while now. I'm in my comeback era. I need to do whatever I can to be a top YouTuber and influencer, okay? I'm gonna blow your back out, bro. <laughs> what I'm realizing is, I want free food. Do you realize that the cost of groceries in America is up? Are you getting sick and tired of rising food costs? Uh, you are not alone. I went to the grocery store. I got two cartons of juice and some Smuckers Uncrustables, $100. The era of just going to the grocery store willy-nilly and buying whatever you want is really fading for a lot of Americans, so. So I'm starting to realize if I want to make a living, I need to become a food influencer. So I'm gonna do everything I can to become one of the world's greatest food influencers. Are any of you aware of the Keith Lee effect? Imagine you own a restaurant and the difference between having a line of hungry customers out the door every day or your establishment looking like a ghost town is based on the experience of one man. That one man is not a professional food critic nor a culinary expert, but millions of people around the country treat his word like gospel. That is the Keith Lee effect. So, the Keith Lee effect, this guy, Keith Lee, okay, he used to be like a UFC fighter. He is a man who failed at the one thing he was actually good at. Then at his darkest moment, he refused to give up and created a meteoric influence in an industry he had no business being in. And then he got into reviewing people's restaurants. And now Keith Lee is a big deal. When Keith Lee comes to town, everybody bends. Well, unfortunately, the entire city of Atlanta would find out about the negative side of the Keith Lee effect. In October 2023, Keith announced to his nearly 15 million TikTok followers that he and his family were traveling to Atlanta, Georgia, and needed some restaurant recommendations. And what I appreciate he does sometimes is when he will register for a restaurant and he won't do it under his own name so he gets a legitimate experience and that has caused a lot of restaurants to get bad reviews from him while there were customers walking in and picking up orders then keith walked into the restaurant and they recognized him and immediately attempted to serve him since he is famous to which he declined keith has always been very expressive that he doesn't want nor deserve special treatment from restaurants these days he sends in his friends and family to do orders so he doesn't receive bias from the establishment I want that kind of power. But I'm gonna let you guys in on something I don't know if I've ever really shared on camera before, maybe a little bit, but people in real life know this about me. I don't like to be seen eating my entire life. I remember in school, kids were always like, I, I'm so scared to eat alone during lunch. Never experienced that in my life. I don't know, I, I think it's weird when people see me eating. I, I find it a personal thing, despite the fact that I've had multiple shows of me eating on camera. All right. Got it. Whisking an egg. This is something I don't know how to do at all. So break this yes. into here. All right, here we go. A little harder. All right, I'm not gonna get a, a slick of shell. Bam! No shell, only sperm. Everybody give that a look. But look, I'm done with that. I'm My, my neurodivergence, I have to throw out the door because I want money. I want free food. So I'm gonna do everything I can to become one of the world's greatest food influencers. Welcome back to another episode of Truly Passionate. I'm your host, William Haynes. Please leave a like on me and subscribe on me. And this is how you get free food. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, now I don't like. You can see the eggs in there. Like Give it a mix up. I worked hard on this with your help. Ew, I don't like What do you mean? I don't like that sound. Okay, so I feel like there are three different angles I could go with this with being a food influencer. I could go the Keith Lee way, where I review restaurants, which I will do later in this video. I'm gonna hit this from the back. Oh, I'm full, my stomach hurts. I am so full. There's the Cedric Lorenzo way. Do, are you guys familiar with this TikToker who I could only describe makes thirst trap cooking videos? Listen, Grand Cave. Ever since I watched those TikTok thirst traps, and do y'all know what I mean when I say those TikTok thirst traps? Everybody comes to the table to Anyway, so. I could do that. I could do it better than him, to tell you the truth. And the last way, uh, what's the last way, Josh? <laughs> and the third way, I could just do what I used to do and people be like, which is like, whatever the trending food is, you make videos about it. But look, I already did that. So let's try the other two ways. First off, so like I said, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't know how to cook. Uh, if you gave me all the ingredients to make scrambled eggs, I could not do it. 
I don't know how to cook bacon. Well, I don't really know how to cook anything much at all. It's real easy, you just make it hot. I think you're up to something. Maybe. This is stretchy. What part of the pig is this? Look how long. Is this a world record? Look to flip that, but I That's did. That's fine, just flip all of them. Okay. You've already ruined it. All right, with those two out of the way, let's- I can probably make a cheeseburger. I, I've done that in my lifetime. I think all you have to do is put it on there. And then once it gets the color you like, you take it off and you flip it. So I don't have time to learn how to cook. So what I'm gonna do is just buy the food beforehand and then pretend like I cooked it. So something I'm also noticing about these thirst trap cooking videos is also cleaning up. She ride around with the top down. Her body ride is a weapon now. Her body ride. I like how they like make cleaning up uh sexy i'm not i mean i can see why the women's are into it like look right and she keep this so active you know your man in her dm so watch him she bought her brand in her bag she the baddest why you mad you we need to redefine what masculinity is okay cleaning up is masculine i what what has got me into cleaning up is realizing how much cardio it takes to clean up cleaning it cleaning up is a workout man so not only am I making thirst trap cooking videos, I'm also making thirst trap cleaning videos. There you go. This is, I'm sure I'm gonna get some free food off of this. Someone is gonna send me, can you thirst trap cook my food? Mm -hmm. Go. Mm -hmm. Go. Do you know how many brands need a muscle man slapping their product on camera? See, but the, the thing about Cedric Lorenzo or whatever his name is, I'm not going to take it as far as him. I'll smack the, the booty of the uh, Pillsbury Doughboy, but he's like spitting on stuff and all of that. I'm not, I'm not still like, he's fingering water. Okay. You should focus on yourself, boy. Yeah. She don't need nobody else for it. Yeah. You can't get on her level even if you had. Okay. I'll finger the water too. I'm not afraid to finger the water on camera. I'm not spitting on nothing though. No, that's not happening. Studies show that Gen Z's most popular search engine is TikTok. So if I wanna make that money, I need to make sure that my videos are at the top of the search engine for TikTok. Who's there? Cedric Lorenz. When you type in cooking videos, he's one of the top most popular viral going people. I'm scared and I'm crying for my mother. Why do y'all do this to me? Like, I literally will be like, don't send me this. And y'all are like, Auntie Deb, Grandma Deb, I got something for you. We move. Oh, he's a black guy. Wait, guys, I actually don't see black men do this. We need to normalize. Ah, not Duchess in the likes. What was that? Turns out, I don't know how to break a coconut. We ended up just breaking it. I just like hit it like, actually hit it one time hard. There you go. Man, never stab me. Uh -huh. You use a hammer apparently. All right, for my next plan of attack, I need to start the William Haynes effect. I need restaurants to straighten up their backs when I come in. If, I, if somebody says I'm William Haynes and I'm coming to your restaurant, I need restaurants I need y'all to shut shut it down for me. I'm not sure how I'm gonna make this happen. So I asked my friend John, and you know John's always got a cousin that cooked me up. So he found me a restaurant 
that we could review. The Backyard Bayou in Union City. Great spot. Excellent. I need like some type of phrase that I do that shows. Mama mia. I, I don't know. That doesn't sound very genuine. But anyway, okay. So here's the plan. We have to find a restaurant that's already good. So when I post it onto my timeline, people will be convinced that I know which type of restaurants are good. I hope you like seafood. You'll always wait for me. She right around with the Oh yeah. So my family, my dad's side of my family is actually from Louisiana and I went for the first time recently. So I was recently experiencing all of this really good Cajun food and it was mind blowing being out there. And I, to be honest with you, being at this place is the best I've seen in California. Let's see what their website says. Download our iOS and Android. Oh no. <laughs> All right, so here I'm on their Instagram. It says the best Cajun restaurant in the Bay Area. I'm going to go ahead and co-sign that. So first off, you know, the guys, they were really nice, and they hooked this up with like what felt like a little bit of everything. I think we had everything on the menu nearly. Um, the part that was trippiest to me was when they brought out the crab leg. Look how big this crab leg is. The ocean. John. <laughs> Oh, that's a beautiful shot. <laughs> Look, there's no forks here. It's like a big kid. I'm serious. I want to know how big this creature was because the middle part is typically the bigger part of the crab. So if the leg of the crab is this big, I felt like I was eating crabbies of all form. What's crabbies of all form? King Klingler. I, I we straight up ate a Kingler. Okay. The lobster mac and cheese, incredible. I buy lobster macaroni and cheese anywhere it's on the menu, and this is the most beautiful looking lobster mac and cheese I've ever had. She East Coast, got my Tim's ready. She making hella money, spell her name with it. The drink, okay, I don't remember what the name of the drink was, but. <laughs> I asked for a drink, I don't have a problem. They, 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 they asked me, what did you want? I said, what y'all got the drink? He said something about Hennessy, and I was like, I don't really drink Hennessy. Um, but I think there was Hennessy in there. Maybe? I don't know. I think it was tequila. It was tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's a heat hit. Uh, but that was good. I pretty much, me and Fia drank the whole thing. It's like a four-person drink, and two people drank it. So garlic noodles. So John was mixing them garlic noodles with his hands, and that stuff was hot. But when it starts to burn, feel free to drop. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And then, of course, the seafood boil. It's been a long time. It's probably been since like 2016 since I've been to a seafood boil. That was a big bag. The entire ocean was in that bag. Oh, okay. We pretty much ate the whole Cerulean City gym at this point. Best I've had in my life. Ooh, it's emotional. Of course, the fried catfish. Now, this is very Louisiana. Everybody in my family tries to make catfish like this, this was very good. And especially the cornbread. I was telling them then. I was like, my mom, oof. She needs to take lessons on this cornbread. How you been making cornbread for 50 plus years and you still messing it up? So then at this point, I'm full. Like you guys know, like I said, I don't really like to eat. I, I typically eat to the point that I'm no longer uh, hungry and then I stop immediately. But the food was so good, I just kept eating. So I was extra full. I was definitely the most full I've been in several years, honestly. And then they were like, wait, you have to have dessert. Dessert? So one of the coolest parts about going to New Orleans that everybody loves is getting beignets. Um, I'm not sure why that's the main place, why, I, why we can't have beignets everywhere, but everybody's beignets are different, and these beignets were huge. I'm gonna hit this from the back. Oh, I'm full! My stomach hurts! I am so full. Mm. Oh, this is really good. It's <laughs> <laughs> mm. oh no, yeah, you're right. Oh, whoa. The texture. John said that they were better than Disneyland, and he drizzled them perfectly. Oh, baby. I'll throw it back. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. 
See, I'm starting to think that John is low-key an expert at this food content. I mean, he does work for Sin News with Timothy Delaghetto, and he did produce uh, People Be Likes uh, and People Cook Like. Uh, but the way that he uh, uh, drizzled all this stuff and all these food, all the way he dangled and, and presented. I mean, the guy off camera was telling him what to do. But uh, <laughs> 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 what did he tell you? Dangle and... The way he told him to dangle and drip. I need a little chocolate drizzle on that beignet. I, that's what we want to get, honestly. Mm. 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 Perfect. So, shout out to JNA Experience. They have an Instagram, which is the production company that uh, got us out there and filmed these videos. They really know what they're doing. Their short form content is amazing, and they knew all the industry terms for making food content that I didn't know. It's important to me to have a heavy name in the food critic industry because I want power. I want money. Look, Keith Lee is very humble about it, and he's like, you know, wants his family to be treated well. I don't care how you treat my family. Make sure I get the food that's good. Look, w when Keith Lee recently went to Atlanta, it was a huge deal. All the restaurants straightened up. When I go to Atlanta, nobody care. They don't even tell me I need to check in or anything. Like, I I'm in Houston. Does, does anybody care? I need the Keith Lee effect, but I need to do it on my own thing. I'm not going to be humble like him. I'm sorry. I hope everyone's okay with that. But... I want to be like that too. All right, so the thirst trap cooking thing, I don't think it's really for me because it's making me feel like I have to start a fans only, which I mean, if, I'm not against, but like, you know, I, I, I'm i starting to, I don't know if I need to really take as many shirtless photos anymore because I think people get it. I, I, and that's why I'm out of the fitness in, uh, influencer thing. I did the fitness influencer thing for a while, but now everybody's always asking to see my six pack. And I'm like, you guys, don't you guys remember when I was more than just my body? Like, don't you guys remember the 20 something years of content before uh, I, I, people used to think I was funny. So that's why I'm moving into the food influencer industry. Food influencers are able to go to a restaurant, eat for free and sometimes charge up to five hundred or a thousand dollars to post on their social media about the food they just got for free. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube are flooded with food content of different styles. And at this point, I need to take advantage of every single one if I want my comeback era to hit as hard as I need it to. What do Keith Lee have that I don't? I used to fight, I've been in a fight. I'm one and oh, baby, okay? Like, I gotta start a family. We'll do another video about that. All right, then there's the other route, which is the YouTube food show. Like people be like, which I've kind of done already. I was on Good Mythical Morning. I know Chef Josh. All right, like out of all the influencers I know, and I'm not joking, Josh is really one of the funniest people I've talked to. Every time I've talked to him, he said something to me that was incredibly surprising to me. I was like, that was ridiculously funny. But the man cannot cook. Look at the food he makes. His, his food is equally as funny as he is as a person. But I, I tried that route already. I, I went on Rhett and Link. I ate their weird foods. I just, I don't like eating weird food. I want to eat good food. There and, you go. and I think on YouTube, if you want to escalate the views and you want to keep getting more and more views, you have to keep eating crazier and crazier foods. And I'm just, I'm not trying to do that. I want to go to the restaurants that are good. I can already eat my own bad food. If I want it, I honestly do think I can cook on the same level as Josh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> if I wanted to eat bad food, I would just cook myself. Um, but during people be like, we did make a lot of great videos. Like I remember I was scrolling on Instagram one day and I saw a clip of the durian fruit and I was like, that is going to be a brilliant video idea. And I think it got like over 500,000 views. Ready? Yeah. Welcome back to People Cook Like. I'm William Haynes. I'm John Ross. Today we're cooking the jackfruit. Today we're actually going to make three different things with this. And then there are videos that I hated making, like the Kylie Jenner top ramen recipe. All right, so uh, I gotta like uh, open this. I'm gonna put this into our hot water, let that soak up. Oh. Which is our most viewed video. Uh -huh. And I should make a video about that, I will. We would even try like trending Taco Bell. Yeah, been there, done that. Will, you said we were going to Taco Bell. This is still work. Oh, we are. I got a plan. Will's good dude, we can too. All right, Will, so they have this new naked chicken chalupa where they replace the taco shell with meat. Oh yeah, give me three of those. 
sandwich in a can. That was one of our good ones. What we have here are canned sandwiches. Say it with me. Canned sandwiches. Off the bat, I don't feel like this is feasible. This I'm a little confused right now because the tops are different. Okay. Sir Strumming. Uh-uh, the Sir Strumming video was too much. It's been part of traditional northern Swedish cuisine since the 16th century. Just enough salt is used in this to keep it from rotting. Wow. So you're telling me after its fermentation process of at least six months, the fish retains its characteristic acidic taste? Yes. That's why this is also known as one of the most putrid food smells in the world. Let's take this to the park. So, in conclusion, one of the most important things to any human being is food. And not just that, but our relationship with it. So, after this video, I think you, I hope that you, just like me, take your relationship with food seriously. Stop spending so much money on food and see how much money food can make you. I want to look at your life as if it's a huge platter of eating and nourishment. And what I want you to do is make that food make you make money because spending this much money on food doesn't make sense. I'm William Haynes. Thank you for watching. Please leave a subscribe on it. Is that what I used to say? I forget.